Hey, what's up YouTubers? Lee John Blackmore here at Super Easy Guitar. This week we're doing four different ways of playing Hotel California, plus the intro, plus the rhythm patterns as well, okay? Before I get into it, I just want to say thank you so much for your support and thank you for all your requests. I super appreciate it. You can hit the links below and you can find me over on Instagram and Facebook if you want to send me any requests or messages. I've also done a playlist in Spotify for virtually all the songs I've done lessons to, and you can find that in the link below as well, as well as a tab that I found online that is roughly based on what I'm doing. Now, the intro picking that I'm showing you is kind of like my own version. I've minimized it and I've simplified it so it's a lot easier for you guys to learn. Once you've mastered that, it's much easier to go and play the full version. Okay, so I've put the tab on how I learned it below as well. Let's zoom in and get straight into it. Okay, so we're going to start off with the intro. Now, the traditional intro will use the capo on the seventh fret. Okay, I'm going to shout out the chords that will work for playing without a capo as well. Okay, so for example, when I put the capo on here at the seventh fret, I play an E minor shape. Obviously now because we've got the capo on seven, th that makes it a B minor. Well, I'm gonna call it an E minor, okay? The second chord is a B7, okay? So normally that would be an F sharp seven, okay? I'm going to call it a B7. All right, so you get the idea. I'm going to keep things simple for you. So here we go. Let's start off with the chords. So we've got E minor, B7, and D sus2. Then lots of different people want to call this chord different names. Okay, we're going to call it C sharp minor seven flat five. Okay. Um, you'll see it sometimes put down as an E9 over G sharp. So that's the name with the capo. The name without the capo could be um, E9 over C sharp, okay? Which will be down there, all right? Anyway, we're not too worried about the names. Then we've got um, C and G. Then A minor, or A minor 7, and then back to B7. But we want to know the picking as well, okay? Okay, so we're going to start off with the E minor strum all the way down. Then we're going to hit the D string, the G string, the B string, G, top E. Then we're going to play open G and play the second fret, okay? So it goes like this. That kind of puts us in the position for the B7 for the next chord. And we're going to start on the open D and we're going to play G, B, uh, sorry, D, G, B, E, B. D, A. So that's going to sound like this. Then we're into the D sus. Okay, D sus 2. And it goes, the pick in D, G, B, E, B, D, G, B. Okay, let's do that again slowly. So it's going to be then we're on to this um, G sharp minor seven flat five. Okay, and the reason people give it different names is because you know normally you'll see. A, a, a G sharp minor seven flat five like that. 
okay? And it sounds virtually the same. It's what we call an inversion, okay? An inversion just means the notes, the same notes, but round a different way, in a different order. Okay? So we're gonna go with this version here, and the picking is A, D, G, B, G, E. Okay, then we're moving down to the C position, and we're gonna play A, D, G, B, G. So then we're down into the C position, and we're gonna play a, D, G, B, G, E. A, B. And then we're gonna play the D string, and we're gonna play that open. So we're gonna lift the second finger off, and hammer on down in the second fret, and then play open G. So let me do that slowly for you. to the G position, but we don't want to put the, all the fingers down just yet. Then we're going to pluck D, G, B, E, B. Put the, second, the first finger down in the second fret and pluck that A. And then we're going to go G, B, then the second finger, third fret on the bottom E string and then G, B again. So let me show you that slowly. So now we're into the A minor position. That's gonna go A, D, G, B, G, E, D, G, E, D, open B. So remove your first finger for that one, okay? Actually, the whole hand is supposed to come off, but I like the other strings to ring out. So let me do that slowly for you. And that leads us into the B7 position, and that goes A, D, G, B, G, E. So that's a nice and easy there. Okay, slowly. You're kind of getting used to that now, all right? So what's actually going on? Okay, so there's, it's kind of like double the amount of picking in the, on the original recording. Okay, so you got that sort of thing going. So if you check the tab below and you know, you're comfortable with this picking section, then by all means check that out, okay? It's slightly different to mine, I know. So the real chord names here, which are very important to know, I'll just go through them quickly so you kind of have an understanding. So this E minor shape, because we got the capo on, the name changes now, all right? So, because that effectively changes the key. So this is going to be called a B minor. Then we've got the B7 shape, which will be called an F sharp 7. Then we've got the D sus 2 shape, which will now be called an A sus 2. Then to the uh, G sharp minor 7 flat 5. Or the E9 over G sharp, okay. And then we go to the C shape, which is actually a G. Then the G shape, which is actually a D. I mean, look, you can see where I'm getting the name from because that's the root there, that note is D, on the 10th fret. And then we go to an A minor seven shape, sorry, yeah, an A minor seven shape, which is actually E minor seven and then back to that B minor seven, 
which again is just an F sharp 7. So let's have a look at the chorus chords. We're going to have a C and then a G. Okay, B7 and E minor. Again, C and G. So the second time is a little bit different. A minor 7 and then B7. So obviously the real names to those chords will be C shape, but that note there, the root is G. Okay, G shape, but that's now a D. The B7, that's an F. Okay, and the E minor is B minor, okay. So then we got the C, which is G, right? And G, which is D. Then we go to the A minor 7 shape, which is E minor 7, then finishes off with a B7 shape, which is F7. Okay, so hopefully there's going to be no dispute between the actual chord names and the chord shapes. So that's kind of the, the way of playing the intro. Traditionally, it's kind of my favorite way of playing. So what else we can do is remove the capo and play exactly the same chords in the open position, okay? So again, it's E minor. Seven, D sus two, now C sharp, minor seven flat five, down to C and G, A minor or A minor seven and B. The chorus chord is going to be the same. C to G. E7, E minor, C, G, A minor 7, B7. With the original recording, the one we were doing at the beginning with the capo, the other guitar, because there's a couple of guitars playing, right? There's actually three guitars, but we're not going to get into that. He's playing the bar chords. So now the bar chord chords are going to be B minor, back in the original key, okay, or, you know, F sharp seven, A and E, G, D, E minor, Back to F sharp seven. The chorus is going to be G, D, F sharp seven, B minor. Second time round, G, D, E minor. sharp seven okay so you could say you know if you're playing with a friend and your friend is playing it doing the intro with a picking then you can play along with the because this is B minor so that's B minor as well where you had the capo all right using my finger as a capo and they're gonna sit sit in sync together, they're going to sit perfectly together, okay? So the other thing you can do, because most people find it hard with bar chords, so you can replace the bar with a capo, but the chords will have to change very slightly. So now the chords are going to be A minor, it's going to be in the same key, E, 
G D F and then C D minor E the chorus is going to be F and C E minor sorry E major A minor F D minor E So and obviously you know you can take the capo off and play those exact same chords but obviously the key has changed from B minor now to A minor Okay, and so on. But you have to remember, whenever you come out of the key of B minor, the original song is in B minor. So you won't be able to play along with it if you're in a different key. Now, let's have a look at the rhythm patterns. So what I'm going to show you kind of the bar chord version of the rhythm, because that's kind of what happens on the record, okay? So that's kind of what's going on in the background there and but you know if you're a super beginner I want to show you an easy way to kind of strum the chords okay now the best way and it'll get you through the entire track is a standard strumming pattern and it goes down down up up down up down down up up down up down down up up down up down so on and it's even going to work for the chorus down down up up down up down down up up down up so I'm doing exactly the same really but I'm putting a bit more emphasis into the rhythm that's going on in the original track. Okay, and in the chorus, that's kind of what we call staccato. So it's kind of short, okay? So we would do the same for the chorus, except we play it legato, so it kind of open things up a bit. So what I'm doing there, I'm going down, down, up, stop, up, down, up, down, 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 up, stop, up, down, up, down, down. So that's kind of staccato version, down, down, up. And you see, I just stop everything, I mute everything with my palm down down up up down up down 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 up up down up down now to play the chorus i'm just taking the stop out and i'm just going to do another up down down up up down up down up down 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 up up down up down up down 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 up down down up up down up Okay, so you get the idea. Now it's a little bit fiddly, so start off nice and slow. Now, if you listen very carefully, sometimes they're plucking between random notes. And it's just what we call random picking. It's 
actually how I learned to pick. It was just kind of when I was asking people what they were doing when they were playing songs, they were saying, oh, we're just kind of picking the strings randomly. So I went away, just tried to pick things out randomly, and eventually you kind of find your groove in it. So it does work, it's just you have to go with it. Start with some nice simple patterns like I showed you at the beginning, then keep on working on it, okay? So there's your rhythm. Down, down, up, down, up, down. Now I just remembered for the chorus, if you're playing on your own, you can play it legato. When you get to D, you can put that cool little riff in there. So what it is, G, D, so I'm doing a D, and then I'm just hitting the top two strings, removing my first finger, Okay, and I'm playing the first and the third fret on the top E and B. Then I slide up, so my third finger is now on the fifth fret on the B. My first finger's on the third fret on the top E. So, and then go back to the first chord, and then my first finger's in the fifth fret on the top E, and my third finger's on the seventh fret on the B. And then slide that down. So it's three and seven, and then D, slowly. And to get there quickly, you can hear I'm sliding it, okay? Now, it's not what they do, it's kind of what I do when I'm playing it live without a backing guitar. Okay? So that's just a nice little touch you can throw in there as well. So there you have it guys, hope you enjoyed this week's lesson. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already and hit the bell button if you want my weekly updates. Really appreciate your support guys, I'll see you again the same time next week.